Africa's second largest province in terms of land mass. The Eastern Cape occupies a good 13.9% or so of the total surface area in South Africa. So quite a valuable province and definitely one to look into to see what is happening in this province and what the next five years have in store for it. I'm joined by the Premier and a number of MECs, but it's now time to take a look at what you think. The ordinary South Africans contributing to the well-being of their country. I'm going to take questions from the floor. I'm also going to take your Twitter uh, questions that you've been sending to us throughout the course of the morning, so keep them coming. Let's go to table number 13, I believe it was. There's a Mr. Monden Gonyama. You have a question that's related to um, arts and culture, and it's very pertinent because we do have the minister for, or the MEC, I should say, for arts and culture in uh, this particular province. Sports, sanitation, recreation, arts and culture. Uh, MEC Majodina is with us as well, so perhaps he can answer that question, but please do proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Ayanda. Let me greet the, the Premier and all dignitaries. <coughs> um, mine is to point towards uh, the faults and, and flaws over the past 20 years. We have an empirical evidence that the Eastern Cape has been underfunded in terms of cultural institutions. That 28 of them in South Africa. <coughs> I'll just point out to one art form out of those the performing arts, there are six, none of which is in the Eastern Cape. And out of those six, the National Treasury and the Department of Arts and Culture is spending 400 million. Now, probably coming via to the MEC of Education, I would want to know, as we are now having matrix writing, how many black high schools have arts and culture as a matrix subject in, in the Eastern Cape? And with arts and culture delivering quick successes and wins, wouldn't we think that as an effect in our children not being inspired, not being and, 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 and motivated? Thirdly, Mr. Uh, um, Premier, I would want to know the practical steps that the province is going to undertake to ensure that the Eastern Cape becomes part of the funding radar of the Department of Arts and Culture and Treasure. Evidence is that they are not doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. To answer the first part of your question related to the education sector, he's your neighbor right there. So if you can walk across and give uh, the MEC the microphone, he's right there. You can touch him. Like, you know, in, your, in a taxi, you just point in the, uh, in the back of someone and say, two driver. So he's right there for you. Thank you, MEC. Thank you very much to my neighbor and uh, to you <laughs> as well. Uh, I might not be accurate in terms of numbers exactly, but what I can tell you, you, you correct. Uh, remember, historically, uh, your African schools have been tending to focus more on math, science, geography, history, and languages. That's generally the historical trend that has been there, and uh, tied up together with the current policy that uh, weighs uh, subjects. You, you still find that trend dominant, uh, and therefore I'm saying a big effort has to be done uh, because it's more like your former model C schools that recognize the importance of, uh, uh, of uh, these subjects, uh, arts and culture, as a, as a key factor in contributing to the economy. But uh, there is a big sense uh, developing that uh, indeed, uh, coupled with um, sports academies that are emerging in the province, uh, there's a growing sense uh, among com African communities that uh, it's, a, it's an important line that must be taken, uh, this one. And of course, coupled here with uh, your math and science, which is uh, the, the priorities of government. So, specifically, I don't have the figure in terms of how many schools, but uh, I can dare say of the 900 high schools that we have, because we have 944 high schools, uh, I could safely say 30% uh, of our, well, it's a, it's, it's a categorization I don't like, which brings in an element of race uh, of African schools because of the main, um, the, the, the historical uh, development and the attitude general that has been implanted uh, to our people. We have a huge challenge because it's part of transformation it's part of transformation that we must get, get that route. And uh, as part of the programs of the department, we've taken a deliberate stance to go into that direction. Uh, 
uh, in partnership uh, with uh, the different departments, in particular Department of Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture. And uh, we've started to profile uh, the question of school sport. We've started to profile uh, the question of uh, joint partnerships uh, with that uh, department. Mm. I'm going to ask you to hand over the mic to your colleague in that department as briefly as possible, just to get uh, insight on the, the, the financial contribution thereof. We know that Amakosa, without being tribalistic, are experts when it comes to uh, the arts and culture department. We have your Kamakwini, your Simpue Dana, your uh, Tandisa Mazwai, your Zahara, who are making inroads, selling the culture and putting it on a platform through music. So what is the budget like in the Eastern Cape to see your future Tandisa Mazwai's image? Indeed, the issue of underfunding is a, it's a concern to us due to our rich history, we are rich in arts, we are rich in culture. And for the mere fact that as a home of legends, we are rewriting our own history. As we do that, we have observed underfunding, however, we are taking up that issue with the national government because when you look at the arts sector, there are certain heritage sites that were supposed to have been declared and be funded nationally. For instance, the Opera House, all others have been funded. But during the negotiation processes, Western Cape volunteered to take care of Eastern Cape and see that is colors. That must come to an end. We are a province on our own and there is no province that can take care of us and we are capable of managing our own resources. At the same time, I must say, our, our, our arts uh, sector has proven beyond any reasonable doubt that Eastern Cape is a force to reckon with, and we are making our inroads and, 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 and strides. We are mandated through uh, outcome number 14 of nation building and social cohesion. You cannot build the nation without you giving resources to this important department. This is the mother of all department. Hence, I always <laughs> um, the traditional. <laughs> so for us to be able to transform our country, you can imagine, I under that, in the, in the 1780 museums, you could only see a very limited history on us as Africans. And we are transforming those uh, museums, we are transforming arts and culture big time. And Eastern Cape is here to stay. We have won a lot of awards. Uh, SAPC awards have been won in this province. It was only on Saturday where we scooped five in the National Choral uh, uh, Music Association. Shaba Wenene was there for her. In Kwanjane, Gubanotini, Sikona, was here to stay. Thank you. There you have it. Okay, a force to be reckoned with. Okay, let's go to table number seven. Let's go to table number seven and uh, keep the questions coming as we engage with uh, the force to be reckoned with. Uh, table number seven is in Sikalelo Kwezi. Ntikalelo Kwezi, where are you? There you are. Please proceed. Yeah, my, my name is Ntikalelo Kwezi. I represent the South African National Military Veterans in the Eastern Cape. I'm the church shepherd in there of... My question goes to the Premier. Premier, what programs are there in the Premier's office that are aimed at assisting military veterans in the Eastern Cape in terms of the Military Veterans Act? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Premier. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, we are coordinating efforts to ensure that there is redress insofar as the plight of military veterans. Uh, we're coordinating than uh, housing some of the programs there. We have already uh, started uh, with the cooperation, the Deputy Minister of uh, Defense assigned to this, uh, that uh, we've set between us a mechanism to coordinate all the activities, uh, human settlements, uh, for instance, as but one of the areas that contribute towards ensuring uh, 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 housing uh, for military veterans. Already there is a program underway. We're looking as well at other things uh, like uh, assisting uh, as students uh, of those uh, who, um, family members of those uh, who are from the military veterans with support, with education, etc. There are programs underway. We're working with the 
uh, Ministry of Defence, the Deputy Minister in particular in that regard. Mm. Uh, how important a focus is that? And I ask this bearing in mind the rich history that this province has and, and, and the, the incredible leaders it's been able to produce, the likes of your Bigos, I said this earlier, Mandela's, your uh, Susulu's, your Tambo's. Putting that into context and a number of other people who remain faceless and nameless, who participated actively and meaningfully in our emancipation as a country, are you putting a particular focus on making sure that they are rewarded? I would make a difference, a distinction between uh, military veterans mm -hmm. as well as our characterization of the province as the home of legends. Mm -hmm. In that respect, uh, the latter part, uh, we now uh, elevating the focus uh, to really celebrate the contribution of a very diverse uh, people uh, from various parts of the province uh, in the discourse of liberation. It's a very important uh, legacy that could uh, serve uh, to inspire tourism and other uh, development uh, that we need. But of course, some of the families uh, we are attending uh, of course, we cannot just uh, isolate families. It should be that we look at everybody because uh, leaders emerge as part of collectives generally. But specifically to military veterans. Uh, of course, military veterans uh, would uh, cut across. They would be from the statutory and non-statutory forces, and we look at them as one, and we attend them to their programs as government in that sense. Mm -hmm. All right, let's leave it there for now and go back to floor. Uh, table number six, is it Bixi? Am I mispronouncing your name? Uh, so name is Mkutu. Mkutu, yes. Yes. Mikri uh, or Mixi? It's Kosa Pela. I must know these things. Ah, uh, Mixi. Oh, it's Mixi. Mixi. Or yes. when we see an X, it is written. Engosi, I am. Oh, Sipu, to carry on. Eh, man, the bullies are going to pass on. The bullies are going to go to the bonge. Eh, the trailer that is called. So when the law um to opai kaiyo mamele de nomla. Eh, where get that? Eh, um bozo. The swagwit kalali pasim. Api pondwe, melono pasa api pondwe. Mm. Eh, abandu ba no mta kukulumbu so wazba. Umpati swa wezo tutu. Eh, benze ismemele le siti. Inkamba ni tutabandwana. Engu one future. Ia pele lwa go December. Now, abandu kengu ba no mta wazba. Abandwana. Baza wea njani school win. Kunyaka ozayo. Eh, okwes bini. Uinkamba nili ibini kwa imali ngukulmende yoku rana le project yes kola transport current. Ii ya pelelewa ingaba ukulmende njombale ingamba nukusuke lango 2011. Uku zanguku. Sa inikwe almost more than a billion. Ingaba ukulmende zamile na ukchekishwa ez mali ze ambe right na. Because kukwabandu abakala yu niteta na wenje. Abana zimoto. Benzo abashupega ili project. Bashili zitangwe zingu. Kukuweske abasholokas. Abanda bangu mamu. Abange nalu izila kutete. So, indoge efwa gala yungu kwa MEC ya yoba. Ba relaktend abandu yu tutangu kule nyangi shiekle yu. Sin tati kambani ya vala. Abayazi maliza abo baza yu sifuna pi. Ekbini kambani valili. Iti yungu kukufuneki strinseki zungu hulme ende uba. Inga babandu baza ukazi nupatale ya kule nyangi. And the company is not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. Uh, that, uh, that, is a, that is a very, very important aspect, especially in this province where children are in far-flung areas and need to go to school. The issue of scholar transport is what uh, Mr. Mkutu is raising. There's a company, One Future, that is uh, alleged to be closing down. What will become of the young people who need to be transported to school? That's the one facet of the question. The other facet is what will become of the assets of that company and whether or not there may have been misappropriation of funds. He said uh, from 20 2011, I believe, until now, uh, you mentioned a billion. I'm not sure if it's a couple of billion of rands that have been spent for this particular initiative. Were those funds allocated to the correct departments? Did they see the fruit that it was supposed to produce? Because people are now um, uh, finding themselves unemployed. Mothers at home have got no sources of income because their husbands are now uh, assumed to be laid off. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge aspect to tackle, and I think it's a multi-disciplinary uh, approach. There's perhaps the education MEC who can speak on it. Premier 
Premier, you can allude to it. And also, if we can speak about it from a financial perspective of, of the funds that will be allocated, what will happen to the children? Let, let, me, let me say, Ayanda, as government, uh, we are committed uh, to providing scholar transport to learners. To that extent, there is provision for that. Uh, the method of doing that uh, is what is being uh, discussed. And that, uh, as we normally do, uh, where we do not provide uh, that uh, internally as government, we source it out uh, from the uh, private uh, concerns. And even in this regard, that is what is going to be done. And where there are concerns about a private uh, company, government is not in that private company. It is for that private company to sort itself out. Is this the One Future company? Absolutely. What happened there? It is a private concern. I cannot uh, speak here about what's happening in a private concern called One Future Development. What I'm interested in is learners being transported to school. And the Department of Transport has got to procure that. And uh, in procuring it, it must follow the procurement regulations. And where the contract has come to an end, the contract has come to an end, they must ensure that there's a new contract in place. So this is the case with regard to the service yes. provider? Yes. OK. The contract has come to an end. Are you suspecting any maladministration of funds? Are there any allegations of, of misappropriation there? And will you be looking into that? Certainly, that is then the function of the Department of Transport to then look at transfers it makes to whatever concerns that those transfers serve the purpose for which they were transferred for. But you can and where be. there has been uh, anything untoward, yes. it's got to be investigated so that we can uncover if there hasn't been any wasteful expenditure. You can confirm, though, that the children will receive transportation uh, for the rest of the year and next year. We can confirm that. Okay. Uh, do we have the MEC? Um, I have some notes here with me, but I can't tell if it's transport as well as uh, safety and liaison transport. Is the MEC with us? The MEC is with us. We're going to give you an opportunity to respond just after the short ad break and also perhaps clarify one or two um, of those concerns that were raised uh, by Mr. Pixie there. Let's leave it there for now. More on this when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs>